this session, Crash the Norm Diversity Rules. It's a session about diversity and inclusion in games. And first of all, I hope you can uh, turn off your mobile phones so we don't get disturbed. Uh, we are from King in Stockholm, Sweden, and my name is Kiki Olofsson, and I am Senior Studio Director for Candy Crush. And I'm Chris Adolfsson, and I'm a Brand Creative Studio Art Director. Let's start with a quick check-in. What's your relation to this topic, uh, diversity and inclusion? I want you to show with your fingers, one to five, and the scale is one, I haven't really thought about it, to five, I'm already very interested and have some knowledge. So put your hands up now. Ah, good. We have a mixed audience and it will be easy for all of you to follow because the presentation is on a basic level. Why do we have this session? King is a company known for casual games with candies and cute characters. Even so, we've had our challenges when it comes to diversity and inclusion. We decided to do something about it, to educate and enlighten people so they can reflect and, reflect and make informed decisions when creating or using game characters. We've been running this workshop at King for a while, leading to games teams opening up their eyes for the subject more concretely creating less stereotypical characters uh, like stronger female characters and broadening ethnic diversity. In this presentation, we'll look at examples from popular culture, both positive ones and pitfalls. We also get personal and look at mistakes that King has made in the past. We've developed a test uh, which is used to test how diverse a game is uh, and you will get to try it out later. That's the, the screens on the walls. So what do we want to achieve with this session? The goal is to empower you to make informed decisions. And it's not about setting limitations, it's about creating new possibilities. And most important of all, this gives you the opportunity to be leaders and not followers. And if everyone in this room starts thinking about this today, imagine what we can achieve together in less than a year. Let's design games for everyone, no matter where they are or who they are. If you want a diverse player base from all over the world, you will need to think big and crush the norm. Because everything we do adds to the world we live in and the world we play in. So why replicate when we can work against stereotypes? A great saga needs all kinds of heroes, and that's it. So what is diversity? It can apply to many different areas, like age, body type, culture, disability, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, socioeconomic background or class if you will, mental health and religion. And diversity is closely connected to equality, feminism, anti-racism, accessibility, intersectional analysis and human rights. All good things, aren't they? And if we want a greater diversity, inclusion is the way to go. And exclusion is the opposite to inclusion. And if you take it to the extreme, exclusion is discrimination, as some groups that don't fall within the norm are repeatedly rejected. And that's how the norm is maintained and reinforced time and time again. And the yellow and the green dots on the outside of the big circle represents those who are excluded. And let's take a look at inclusion instead. Hold on, because this is an advanced PowerPoint animation. I made it myself. <laughs> so, see what happened there. The circle was expanded to get a better mix, room for more variation and to be more inclusive. And of course, inclusion doesn't mean that just everyone needs to be represented at all time, especially not in a game with just a few characters. It's more about having a greater variety and a more true representation. We get more types of cards that our players can identify with and get to know. And in the end, that's just more fun. Where do we begin? Our output reach millions of players of all sorts, and we have a unique chance to make a difference by showing a diverse world in our games. So, to do so, we need to make conscious decisions. So let's explore a character universe with a wide range of options. And before continuing, I want to make clear that the pictures we will show 
It's chosen because they are understandable examples. It doesn't mean that all characters in that game or film are good or bad from a diverse perspective. You need to investigate your own assumptions and presets, who you are and how that affects the work you do. It doesn't necessarily need to be your own culture that affects what you do. It's also about the mainstream culture that we're constantly fed with. For instance, do you use a white man as a foundation when you create a new character? And do all women have the same body type, slim and curvy? And yes, let's investigate. Have you by any chance only created characters of the same cultural background as you? So remember to always question all stereotypes. Ethnicity, this is an interesting and embarrassing example because this is actually from a king game called African Rainmaker released six years ago. And it's a typical example of an African stereotype. And does the personality and looks go beyond ethnicity cliches? No, they don't. And that's what we call a typecast. And don't worry because we're taking this game down. Age. Some people might think that you can solve the age spread by adding an old evil witch. Well, it doesn't really work like that. And when it comes to gender, a female character needs more personality than just being a woman. If you strip back the gender traits and looks, is there anything left more than a blank canvas? If not, you need to go back to the drawing board and the Smurfs really should. Disability, an evil pirate with a wooden leg. We've seen that before, haven't we? Think bigger, because people with disabilities can be heroes too. And when it comes to sexuality and romantic motivation, Mario saves the princess over and over again, but maybe we don't have to limit us to that. What if a girl can save a girl or a boy can save a boy? There are so many things to build an original character with, so let's explore the toolbox. No one ever successfully fought a war in a bikini, and really, clothing that calls attention and sexualizes the female body is not necessary for most narratives. On the other hand, have you dressed all male characters in all covering cool and tacky wear, functional clothes and heavy armor? Don't get stuck in old rats, you have to mix it up. A good rule of thumb is to compare the clothing between genders to unlock stereotypical representations. This is a positive example from Assassin's Creed Syndicate. The, twin, the male and female twin assassins have the same kind of clothes, armor and weapons. Are all males dark and brooding and all females happy and colorful? Uh, sure, you can use blue for boys and pink for girls, but there are endless possibilities for color schemes that can be used. And if you go for cliche, you could at least play around with it. This is a great example from the film Inside Out. And look beyond the usual suspects. Fat doesn't mean lazy and smart doesn't need to wear glasses and someone that looks like Prince Charming isn't always the good guy. This is Faith, a plus size superhero we all can admire because she has tremendous psychic powers. A diverse game world includes short, tall, chubby, skinny, curvy, athletic, disabled or non-disabled, and characters of different ethnicity. Professor Xavier from X-Men is using a wheelchair, but this has never held him back. He's one of the most powerful mutants in the world. And watch out for those archetypes. They're great at telling stories, but they might take you down a beaten path, something that the, something that the player has already seen before. The healer doesn't always have to be an older woman. The hero can be someone else than a white male, and the savage can be European. And remember the supportive characters in the background. I don't know if you have seen Game of Thrones, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but they really have an interesting and often very surprising mix of characters. There are some principles to guide you. Decide the character personality traits and narrative first. Which story do you want to tell and with which characters? After this, you can decide the gender, ethnicity, body type and culture. And always aim to let the body look and poses of the character reflect the personality and narrative. 
aim for a well-balanced group of characters, and last but not least, always ask yourself, did I recreate the stereotype, and if so, why? And remember, with an original character, it's easier to create a strong and recognizable brand. So we've developed a test to see how inclusive and diverse a game is, and it's called Diversity Space. And this is how the test looks like. Exciting, hey? So you start by identifying the norm, and here we use the norm for action games developed in the Western world. And the same norms are almost always applicable for productions aimed for the Western market. So the culture is Western, ethnicity is Caucasian, age is like neither young or old, women are usually younger than men. Ability is non-disabled, sexual orientation is heterosexual, and body type is stereotypical, and that is slim and curvy for women and athletic or bodybuilder types for men. And gender identity, male is the norm, women come second, and all others are very, very uncommon. So the norm is the green area here, so that's a really, really tiny diversity space. And now we're going to test some characters from the game Overwatch from Blizzard. And this is Saria, she is an unusual character. Her design actually emerged from a demand from players to Blizzard for a greater diversity of gender, body type and ethnicity. And let's take a look at her diversity space. Culture, she is Russian, so that's not very common. Ethnicity, she is Caucasian, so she's on the norm. Age, she's 28, so neither young or old. And ability, she is non-disabled, so she's on the norm there. Sexuality, you can't see this on the outside and there is no information on this, but she does have some queer vibes and there's been some rumors in the community, but we need to put her on the norm. And body type, she is a bodybuilder and all those muscles are unusual for female characters, so let's put that quite a bit from the norm. And gender, she is a woman, so she is in the middle of the gender scale. All in all, she's got quite big diversity, spray, diversity space, breaking the norm with gender, culture, and body type. And this is Lucio. Starting up with culture, he is a DJ living in Brazil, so he is a little bit out from the norm. Ethnicity, he is black, so I'll put this quite far out. It's not that common. And it's not the scale from white to black, but Caucasian people are most common, and Asians are more common than, let's say, Indians. Age, he's 26, so that doesn't stand out from the norm. Ability, he is non-disabled, so he's on the norm. Sexual orientation, don't know anything about that, so I'll keep him on the norm. And body type, he is athletic, and that's expected of men. And gender identity, he is a man, which is the most common. So looking at the diversity space, he has got a sharp point towards ethnicity and a little stretch in culture, but he doesn't stand out from the norm much in any other ways. And then we've got Torbjörn. He is a Swedish weapon designer. That's not super common, but it doesn't stand out from a culture point of view, so I'll put him close to the norm. And he's white, so nothing on ethnicity. He is 57, so he is older than the most. He is disabled and has got a prosthetic arm, so we put this quite far out on the ability scale. We don't know anything about his sexuality, so I keep it close to the norm. And body type, he is a person with short stature, so that's a bit out from the norm. However, it's not that uncommon with a body type like that, together with a lot of muscles in games. And he is a man, which is most common. Looking at the diversity space, he does stand out a bit from the norm. And this is when it gets interesting, because by combining the characters in the diversity space, you get an overall picture of your game's inclusion level. So for this being only three characters, we got quite a good spread in the diversity space. So good job, Blizzard. And remember that the whole diversity space doesn't need to be covered. Just avoid having all characters huddle up in the middle. And do you think this could be a useful tool? Hands up if you do. That's super, because you're going to test this out soon. But first over to Kiki. And remember, even if you have developed characters with a big diversity space, you can still have stereotypes. Would you say that these characters are stereotypes in any ways? Hands up if yes. So let's take a look at some pitfalls to keep you on the right track. 
The angry and brutish black man is one of the most common stereotypes in games. Let's do something more original. And the representation of women in games are often embarrassingly uniform. These are the female characters from Tekken 6. All of them have very stereotypical body types and clothing that emphasize that. And we are doing something similar in our King games. This is from Shuffle Cats. All those Jesse Cats look awesome. But don't they look a little similar? So let's compare them with the Tomcats. And the Tomcats are allowed to have a lot of different body types, expressions, etc., which is usually the case with, my, with male characters. So let's compare again. It's quite obvious, isn't it? And we have whiteness, that's clearly a default in a lot of games. The Witcher is one of them. And sexualizing poses is another pitfall. Make sure that the character's body, look, poses, etc., reflect the character personality traits and narrative. This is an example from Overwatch that you might have seen before. It made quite a buzz as the pose doesn't go along with her personality. So be mindful of what you're doing and watch out for those stereotypes. And let's end on a more positive note. There are games which stay clear from pitfalls and challenge norms. This is an example from Journey, who have created a game with the character without the clearly stated gender. They have been thinking big and they have crushed the norm. Some other positive example, this is Faith Connors in Mirror's Edge. Uh, she is a powerful Asian woman and has the leading role. Watch Dogs 2, which takes place here in San Francisco. They have been working actively with the representation of diverse ethnicity and touch upon subjects like autism. And we have the upcoming game Last of Us Part 2 with the story that includes LGBT characters. So now we're going to do the workshop. You are going to take a closer look by trying out the diversity space method. And we will look at four games. Clash of Clans from Supercell. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare from Infinity Ward and Activision. Super Mario Run from Nintendo. And The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess from Nintendo. So to make it easy for you, we have decided that the norm is the same norm we were talking about earlier, the Western market. So we want you to look at the characters and discuss and draw the diversity space sections for each character and you use one color per character. And you have the workshop material uh, towards the walls. So if you just uh, go to the flip charts and team up with like four people or so in each team and you start the exercise. Uh, and then one group from each game will present the results. I think it went quite well. We thought it could be super <laughs> unorganized, but I think you <laughs> got something out of it. <laughs> it was a bit chaotic. Uh, first, we're going to look at Clash of Clans. Uh, so we have a team that has uh, accepted to present their results. We have we have asked uh, we have asked the team. Yeah, you, you can come up here if you like. Yeah. Do I'm you sure. have? Maybe you Could should. You uh, where is your sh like chart? Oh, Which one? Bring it up. Again? Yeah, maybe. Oh. Okay. It will be a bit difficult to see, but you get at least. Uh, sorry. You found it easy to do the exercise? Or was it a lot of discussions in the groups? It was good. It was good. And there are no like correct answers. We are all different and we assess differently. Hi. So uh, we did Clash of Clans and what we talked about is that the game is kind of pretty normative. Um, the only characters that really seem to uh, diverge are uh, the first character, um, 
just in terms of gender identity, well not gender identity, sorry, correct, incorrect one, culture and ethnicity, and then everything else is pretty normative, even coming down to the body, uh, body type, kind of like we all discussed with um, male characters and that they tend to have a variety of physiques and uh, kind of general buff physique here. And then um, with the two female characters, two and four, kind of same, almost the same exact body type, generally a more narrow waist, um, but same sort of chest, shoulders, figure, normally what you would expect in a lot of uh, female character designs. Um, all of them were able-bodied, and, uh, and then the only other thing that stood out in terms of uh, variety was that there were two female characters, and that was pretty much the only point that we gave it for uh, a variety of five characters. Okay. And the other teams who were looking at Clash of Clans, did you have like similar results, or you thought differently about the same? Okay. Thank you. Thank I you. Think this serves for a round of applause. Yes. And then we had. Sorry, I'm just messing up the. Yeah, Super Mario, would you like to come up? Uh, hi, <laughs> um, so uh, we discussed uh, Super Mario Run and we found that the game had um, some points um, in some areas but completely lacked in others. So where the game lacked is uh, in ability since they're all uh, non-disabled and in sexual orientation as well since they are all presumably straight. Um, where the game was a bit more diverse is in gender identity. Two of the characters are female, which is, well, you know, a little bit uh, outside of the norm. Um, when it comes to culture, uh, Mario and Luigi are both Italian, which is still like Western, but it's not the most represented type, we presume. So we put them just a little bit on the, like out there. And, uh, uh, age as well, uh, we, like, Mario, Peach and Luigi are all sort of not neither young or old, but both Toad and Toadette are children, so that is, you know, just a bit outside of the norm, right, we, we put them. And uh, then we had uh, body types as well, uh, so what we uh, noted here is that Mario is short, like he's actually shorter than Peach, so we gave him quite a high score for that. And also that the characters are, they're not necessarily um, very, very muscular, they're more like, uh, you know, rounded. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> we gave it quite high points for that. Uh, even though we didn't give it like very high marks because uh, we, we said that this still like, the art style of the game still is, is rounded as well, so even though like, it's not like super muscular, it's still not far out from the norm of the game. Like, it's still pretty normative in that context. So we give it like, yeah, pretty high marks for body type. Um, but yeah, and also in ethnicity, none of them are different from the norm since they're all white or, and Caucasian, so yeah. So that's, that was our results. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> And then we had a team looking at Legend of Zelda. Cool. Um, so our team la looked at um, Twilight Princess and the Legend of Zelda. And there was a bit more variety here maybe than the previous teams. Um, we kind of, so, Zelda and Link are very kind of traditional um, fit into the norm, even like despite the maybe kind of mythological influences of the game, but especially Link is very, you know, Western kind of feudal wear. Um, 
and they're both very traditional body types and seemingly sexual orientation as well and ability of course. Um, Ganondorf we kind of gave a midway in, in culture and kind of high in ethnicity because I mean he's definitely not traditionally Western um, I guess the game he's almost like a feudal Japanese um, interesting you know I, I don't really know what um, <laughs> what so that's great <laughs> adds diversity um, age he's though he's in the don't really know stage he's still in like the prime of his life at least for for a male character so we kind of rated it a bit off the norm but mostly very very tightly there i guess um it's um midna um it's midna right yeah okay yeah great um she's kind of like an interesting one and kind of um you know enlarged the the sphere a lot i guess because as somebody pointed out she's you know, she only has sight in one eye, which is interesting. Her um, body type is quite different, even though somebody pointed out that within the context of her kind of, she still has some feminine traits, even though it's, um, but yeah, no, no, she's, she was definitely the most kind of diverse character and added a lot to the sphere, which was very narrow just after um, Link and Zelda. So yeah, that was our findings. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have the Call of Duty team. We had the same session for Activision Blizzard yesterday. We had a studio summit, so that was very interesting. So we were looking at a Call of Duty game and we found that uh, two out of the five of the characters are really normative, they were exactly on the bubble, so four and one were on there. We also had uh, one female character, which was, it took the gender identity out a little bit, and then a black character, which took out the uh, ethnicity. And then we said that having the robot on the team actually expanded the sphere a lot because the culture was unknown and ethnicity was unknown? Yeah, actually having the robot on the team posed uh, probably our most difficult decisions for determining what to put on this because there was debate because not all of us are actually that familiar with this particular Call of Duty game. So there was uncertainty as to whether or not it was an emphasis on robotic prosthetics or just the use of a robot character on the team. But it does stand out in terms of uh, ethnicity and I guess gender identity because it's sort of abstract and out there. Does it have a gender? Um, we looked at it, and more or less, if you take that head off the body there, it is still fit into a very muscular male archetype in terms of its body design. Um, sexual orientation could be asexual, not too sure <laughs> exactly with that. Um, but otherwise, for the most part, very boring group of people aside from Mr. Robot there. <laughs> I was actually a little disappointed because when I was standing further away from our smaller picture, I thought number one was a Latino female and I was like, that's not as bad of a spectrum. And then I got closer and it's exactly the same as number four and completely diminished the diversity of gender pools and, uh, and cultural identifications. I mean, the one thing I'll say in defense for this game is just considering the context of the play, for at least for body types, is simply the fact that um, it is like a military and oriented game, so you do need to have athletic people and people that are fit for service out in the field. So, I mean, they don't really have much leeway there for that. So I'd, I'd actually challenge that. There. Okay, I cool. Participate in sporting the military uh, with an operation that have all body types. Okay. Like, I, don't, I don't think the heroes need to be ripped. So. Sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Good input, I guess. Though. My only, I guess I was kind of sad, oh, well, the fact that we haven't played the game uh, actually made it give us some hope that there was something different about those characters, like the sexual orientation. That, so we were kind of putting dotted lines there and hoping that um, the game designers actually made the right choices to make that game do it diverse. But if they didn't, then it would be very sad. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I also want to mention uh, another in initiative from King. We are partnering for the second time with Diversity. 
uh, to sponsor a scholarship program for 10 European female talented students to come over here to GDC. And this initiative gives them an awesome opportunity to network and attend exciting sessions and further on hopefully a career in the gaming industry. They are sitting here uh, in front. So, uh, I hope you reach out to them afterwards and maybe give them your best tips and tricks or other opportunities. Thank you. Uh, so, did you find the content in this session meaningful? You liked it? Uh, did you get any new insights? And do you think it will be useful for you to look more into uh, how diverse and inclusive your games are? Good, that was our, uh, that was what we wanted it to become. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have some time left and uh, if you have some questions, we will try to answer them. I think we have a microphone in the... Test, test. Okay. Hi. Um, I just wanted to know how long you've been focusing on this in King. Like, is this a new initiative you've been doing, or how long have you actually had a focus on this in your games? Have you been looking into this from the design states and all that until you... You said you mentioned you had some games that weren't very diverse, and you kind of killed those off, but, I mean, when did you start this process? In fact, we started, it was one and a half year ago, yeah. when we invited Anita Sarkisian to a King for Market, that's like a conference we have for whole King. Uh, and we really liked her talk and started to think that, is there something we can do in our games? Uh, usually the King games are not very character driven, it's more about candies or vegetables or something <laughs> else. So, um, but we are going more towards uh, games with characters, so we felt that, why not like start before it's too late. Uh, and uh, we have been out in all studios uh, so far and we have had a session for, for them. So we're really trying to, to go towards the right direction. But as you could see, it's sometimes we fail anyway. So, but um, that's at least our plan. And we haven't, this is not our, this is something we have done ourselves like on the side because we just felt it was a very important topic. So. Um, yeah. Any more questions? Hello. Hi. Yeah. Hello again. Um, I don't really like taking up space in these kinds of things, but I just wanted to say, I think the tool is really cool. Um, one of the things I noticed, though, is that there's so much difference in how people interpret it, and there's so much complication in terms of whether you take in the context of the game or not. Um, and I think that that makes a really big difference in how we look at doing this in different communities and what tools they have. And so um, I'm, I don't have a question, sorry, just kind of like feedback a little bit for folks in the room who might want to use it, I guess, in terms of... I, like, I'm really happy that you mentioned the context is also important. So we were doing Peach and we're like, well, she's a damsel. And so do we want to give gender points for the fact that she's a damsel and she's stereotypical? Um, and so I, I kind of think of this a little bit like the Bechdel test, which is the test to assess um, whether a film has... Um, Oh my God, this is a thing I know really well. If, if two female yeah, if there's characters two, can thank talk you. <laughs> about anything else yeah. than a man. Which is a super great starting point for folks to understand that. And I think that this tool plays that same kind of role, which is a great starting point to get teams talking about it. Um, but then layering on the pieces of like who is the character, like you were saying. And I'm wondering if there's a way to integrate that, yeah. which is not a answer now thing. But. It's, it's a really good input and yeah. I think that the diversity space is a tool that is mostly to be used by game developers and narrative and game artists yeah. so they are aware of what they are doing. Uh, but as we mentioned you can still you can still have like a really big diversity space but all the characters are stereotypes so you, you would need to check that as well. Yeah absolutely but I think this is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah. So I would like to know your opinion on uh, what someone might think about 
in regards to uh, people's reactions to your diverse cast that you create in video games or in whatever, so that you're not like just filling in a checkbox kind of thing. Because while that's not necessarily what you're doing, it might be what it appears to be. And so I'm wondering with, uh, as long as it makes sense in the story, should you just go for as much diversity as you feel like? Uh, or do you want to kind of watch to make sure that it's not just like, here's one of this type and here's one of this type kind of thing? Like, what would you say to that, that kind of an idea? It depends on how many characters you've got in a game, of course. And it would be really strange if you ticked all the boxes in, in only one character to have it, have it done with. So it's more about getting a greater variety. And yeah, you don't need to do it in all characters all the time. But just if you recreate the stereotype, you should be aware of why you're doing it. Does that answer your question? It's a very complicated question. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Uh, okay, hi. Um, so you mentioned that you know at King you you've all been kind of thinking about this more and trying to focus on this more. Uh, I'm curious if you've gotten generally gotten like a lot of a lot of buy-in from everyone on the team about trying to pay more attention to this, trying to improve inclusion and diversity, or if you've gotten kind of some pushback, some resistance, and if so, how you've how you've dealt with that, how you tried to bring those team members um, on board with supporting this. Yeah, mostly, we've got a lot of buy-in, uh, both from games team and from our brand team. But I think we're taking it baby steps. It's, we haven't like overhauled the whole company yet. But yeah, it's a good start at least. And we're just uh, we were just looking at a mid core game that we're developing right now, and they're like, oh, check check this out. We have so many like strong female characters, and just at the first look, I like, but they all have the same body type still. You know why? Maybe this big uh, gorilla could be a, a female instead, and etc. So it's even if they really try, it's easy to like fall back into some kind of safe area that you have to challenge yourself. Yeah. It's really an on ongoing discussion yeah. and so a learning not, process for for everyone. We are not perfect at all. King. Uh, so my question is kind of. You might have exactly the same answer because it's, it's very similar. Um, but I've heard of some companies where there is pushback regarding like, hey, we designed all these cool, you know, diverse characters. And then someone will come in and say, yes, but we have, you know, A-B testing and data that says like these generic characters perform way better with our audience because whatever, you know. Like sort of when people are planting a stake in the ground and saying we have like this particular reason that we want to keep things within the norm, how would you push back against that? Absolutely, we have that challenge as well, especially if you do t character testing one by one. You don't see a, a, the whole character setup, you only see one character, and then people tend to go for something they know, they go for a stereotype because they like it. But if you have a whole, stere a whole character setup and that's what you test, uh, there's usually much less reactions on things that falls outside of the norm. So I think that's the way to go. Um, and there, it needs to be a will uh, in the company or in the team that does it as well, mm -hmm. a drive for it. That you are willing to take some risks maybe, because if you just go by all the tests, uh, you will never like challenge what we have. And sometimes, I, I think sometimes the players, they don't know what they want to have. Uh, they are so used to, to those stereotypes, so they like want it. Uh, but if we present them other options, maybe they start to reflect more themselves and, and find it more fun to have a wider a character base. Yeah. And there is an urge for more diverse characters. Players are actually asking for it actively, and now is the right time to start thinking about it actively. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there. Uh, I thought this was a really interesting tool and could possibly be used in educational spaces. Um, I work at a university that focuses on game design. Um, and I was wondering if there's a resource where educators could access both your set of cultural norms and the graph for the diversity space. You can email any of us and okay. we can send it to you. Awesome. And we're, hopefully we can do it as a digital tool as well, so you can add in like 50 characters and you can get a heat map where you actually see where you got most uh, diversity. Yeah, I think it'd less. be a really great way to start conversations about diversity in our program. So thanks for that. Sounds great. 
Hi. Um, so this exercise that we used, uh, there were a lot of different metrics for diversity. Uh, there was gender, or ability, body type. Uh, have you, do you focus on all of them systemically at King, or are you finding some more difficult to expand than others? I think we're not that story driven yet at King. So sexuality has never come up as a point. Uh, mental health hasn't, or, or religion, so there's a few points lacking, but we wanted to do this as, as covering as, as possible. So it's, if, if you've got a really strong storyline and it's clear for players, I think you can actually check in on all the points in the diversity space. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, great. Thank you for your time. It's been awesome to have you here.